I'm Brad Miller. I work for uh, General Electric Global Research. I'm a cognitive scientist there, which means I basically try to understand how people think and model that using software because that's how we check, you know, essentially test our theories. Now that can be exploited in a couple of ways. One is to build better user interfaces, right? So if we understand how people think, we can provide them with the information they need to make better decisions. Um, the other thing we can do is we can actually make devices smarter, right? So if devices think more like we do, then they can make better decisions. The IIC is basically, it's the Industrial Internet Consortium, and I think the basic idea is, is that we've got an internet which was designed and developed for the way people move information toward and back from each other, right? So all of the stuff that's currently on the internet, FTP, email, the web, is all designed as a way to facilitate the intermediation between people. But now we're starting to get machines that also need to facilitate intermediation, right? And the ways that they're gonna do that are fundamentally different. The requirements for doing that are fundamentally different, right? The internet is, for example, not real time, all right? And the internet um, as it exists today doesn't allow for, let's say, autonomous machines to discover each other, right? You have to go through Google, you have to have URLs, and none of that really makes a lot of sense when I'm starting to talk about machine-to-machine -machine kinds of communication. Um, so the industrial internet is looking forward toward uh, being able to enable new kinds of applications that we really can't do today with the internet standards as they are. Yeah, so it's really very interesting. So I think, I think a lot of people are coming here and they're saying, you know, great, you know, we've got things that we want to be able to do, whether it's the internet of things, the internet of everything. I mean, everybody has sort of this way that they've been thinking about the problem. And here's why it's hard to do that today, right? And maybe just that there's a plethora of standards, but not everybody agrees on which set of standards to use. Um, and the fact that we're getting kind of a very much a cross, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, cross section, you know, from small businesses, academia, to large businesses like GE, of course, um, government agencies, we're being able to pull all that together and sort of saying that, you know, here's a way to kind of look at these problems and make sure that we can make progress toward new applications in the future. So right now I am chairing the use case subcommittee. So what we're doing is collecting the other use cases um, for this industrial internet, and we're, we're collecting both sort of the far off scenarios, what, what's this thing gonna be like in 10, 15 years? And that's partially to identify what are the gaps, like what are the things that we can't possibly do with just the standards we have today um, that you know, if this thing's gonna be lasting 30, 35 years, we don't wanna just tie ourselves down to, here's the immediate needs and problems. But then we're also trying to bring that in and say, all right, well, here are the things that we're trying to do right now. And it's hard to do because, you know, there's, there's 15 different standards in this area. So is there a way of reducing the number of standards, you know, increasing the scope of some of the existing standards to make sure that we're satisfying what everybody actually needs without everybody just having to pick a different standard? Most of the standards that are, that are kind of out there are about how do we send bits across a wire. And it has to transform itself toward you know, the actual problems that are being solved because people are just layered, they're, they're sort of using this, okay, I've got this protocol, and that's basically all the existing internet is. It's a, it's a series of protocols. Uh, here's how I'm gonna use it, and the way I choose to use it's gonna be different than the way somebody else uses it. Um, we are, you know, everybody who joins it, you've really got to go beyond just joining it. You've got to join the different working groups and you've got to contribute. That's the only way that you're going to actually make a difference. So I think it's, uh, it's exciting. It's interesting to hear about other people's problems and their ideas about solutions. Uh, mapping that to your own ideas because, you know, we, we, we're all inside of our heads to some extent and being able to figure out, well, how does this really meet the road? How does this meet the real world needs of other people? This can be a big experience. In some sense, this is a way to both get agreements among the community on here's kind of the right ways to solve some of these problems and prevent future problems and things like security and scalability, but it's also a way to make things more efficient for your own business by saying, well, at least I'm gonna only have to solve this problem once. So I think being a member of the IIC has meant that I have an opportunity to take some of my research interests 
and push it out there into the real world where, you know, it, even though some of these things are a little bit further out, um, I can make sure that the kinds of um, architectures and standards out there will, f will support them in the future, right? So the stuff that I do in the lab can ultimately get out into the real world and make a difference to people.